you ever notice how you inadvertently draw the wrong people to you? When you're crafting your audience, you have to be very, very intentional. Let's take Hustlers Kung Fu the channel. There's tax information on there. There's credit information on there. There's storage auction information. There's how to start an LLC information. There's too many topics. And what I'm getting ready to do is to streamline the topics because what's happening is I'm drawing the wrong people for my current products. And that's a big problem. So my advice to you, whatever you're doing in creating content for your offer, you want to keep it congruent because I can't say that I don't want these people when I put out videos and content that got me these people. You craft your audience and you could craft it very deliberately or you can craft it haphazardly. And mine is somewhat deliberate and haphazard. When I was doing storage auctions only, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013-ish, that's when I started to make a lot of pivots. But 2009 to 2013, I was rock solid. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. How to make money from A to Z with self storage unit auctions. Audience was very tight. I made a lot of money. And then I started pivoting and I did a very bad job at pivoting. And it created this mix mash of a channel. And one of the things that you should understand that if you have a small audience that's very engaged, that's very passionate, that is really listening to the message that you put out, you can make a lot of money, even though it's small. And that's what I'm here to tell you with your content. And let's talk about experimentation. Let's say you have five or six different ideals. That means you should create five or six YouTube channels or five or six blogs or five or six, five or six Facebook pages and test everything. You're going to have to test because in the beginning, you're going to be really small. And this is the perfect time to test your audience and to test out what you're putting because your mistakes will be contained and your risk would be very small because you don't have a large following. You don't have anything at risk. So you are really in a situation where you could create so much content. And if it doesn't go anywhere, no one's really going to know. <laughs> no one's really going to care. So test on and test on. Now, the first step into building a rock solid, profitable audience is you yourself must have a really good offer. The offer is everything. The offer work, and this is how we're going to outline the offer. The offer is the thumbnail. The offer is the title. The offer is the description. The offer is everything that is related around the click. And if you have, give you a good example, like people who do live streams, and live streams are a special animal. If you put up a live stream and you start going, hey, what's up? How you doing? Shout outs, right? You will lose so many people. If you notice how I do my live streams, I do them as if they're going to be a video because there are going to be a video. So you get the content first and then three, four minutes later, then I go into the shout outs because for someone who's coming a little later, they can be involved. They can see what's going on. They can become hooked to the content before I get into the shout out thing. So that's a very important thing, but you craft your audience. Now I'm going to teach you how to craft a rock solid audience. First, take out a sheet of paper. I love paper. I love pens. When you write stuff down with a pen and a paper or a pencil and paper, you activate a different part of your brain. Don't skip over this and don't, well, I'm just going to do it on my iPad and I'm going to do it on my computer. Do not do that. Actually follow my advice sheet of paper, write down what you are deeply determined to do. Because one of the things about this course is I'm not going to teach you how to become a social media manager. I'm not going to teach you how to become a better flipper on Craigslist. I'm not going to teach you how to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to teach you the strategy and the structures of direct response, which means if you happen to have a YouTube channel, this will make it better. If you happen to have a Craigslist warehouse. This will make your ads and stuff much, much better. As you write down what you want to happen, let's say, let's say you have a moving company. How do you write copy that creatively 
moves people. And I'm going to actually give you a good example. And this is something that one of my clients did. When, when a person's moving and they're looking to move stuff, they're looking for price. And moving companies try to keep people in a two hour minimum, a three hour minimum, because, you know, it's a lot of money having people having trucks. Well, I said, why don't you put up a dollar for your move? And then he's like, whoa, whoa, I would go out of business. I was like, no, no, you're going to qualify it. And then essentially he qualified it. And not in the fine print, it's like, hey, a dollar for your next move. And essentially the qualifier, qualifiers were so strident that like two or three people got the dollar move but his business literally quadrupled because he has such a compelling offer one capture attention then once you get them in there and it's like oh it's this this and a lot of people start falling out it's like no i can't do this i can't oh but i can do this and that's just one of the things that you can do so don't look at what's the next best thing to do or no no look at you Look at what you have to offer. Look at what you can you make cookies. Uh, do you do eBay? Whatever you do, you want to do it better. So take the sheet of paper and list out 10 business models that you think that you can do. Do that now. Do not like. All right, Glenn, I'm done. Don't do that. Take a few hours, take a few days and craft these business models. Because here's the thing. Once you start these business models, once you start building this audience, this is going to be a long term play. This is going to be for a minimum of six months to a year or years. What are you going to write about if you just go with something that's trendy and current and you don't know a lot about it? What are you going to write about? So look inward and create 10. That's right. 10 different business models that you think you can do that you feel that you can build an audience around because if you do not and i'm going to give you a good example of this it's going to go bad years ago 2009 i did passionatefriday.com businesscreditmentor.com and urbanpackrat.com not only am i giving you this advice i followed it so i had one two three blogs and I went at it hard. I thought it was going to be business credit and mentor, right? Nope. That would be passionatefriday.com since I just came off of writing this relationship book. Nope. It was urbanpackrat.com. I could write more blog posts. Thus, pull them, pull them out of the air. Pull them out of my ass. Just content, content, content. And then after I had, after the honeymoon phase of business credit mentor and passionate Friday and business credit mentor ran the ground very quickly before I start scratching for content. Then Passionate Friday, that went on about three months. But urbanpackrat.com, I could write five blog posts a day for years, easy. And that is where your interest lies. Whatever you can do, and this is the thing, and you gotta understand this, and I want you to hear me. It may not be what you quote, like. So do you like being broke? Do you like not having the money for your family? Do you like having to wait until you get paid to buy something? I don't think you like that, right? I don't think you like it at all. So one of the things is that you may have a skill set or a talent that's very profitable, but you may not like it. Well, put on your big girl panties, put on your big boy pants and learn to like it because time is ticking. So start writing down your 10 business models.